Well, I don't know uh, whether any of you have heard this news, but apparently Richmond have snuck through to a grand final. It, it's, uh, here in Melbourne, it's not getting a lot of media traction, so we, we thought we'd bring this to your attention and try and analyse it in some form here at the grand final edition of the Titus and Sergio Variety Hour. I'm Sergio Paradise, and here is Brownlow medal favourite Titus O'Reilly. <laughs> have we heard? Have they got an opponent? I, I think it's the Crows. But oh, I, from I had, the, the I had to, Crows. I had to Google it. Because you're not getting much coverage about the Crows here in Melbourne at the minute. Oh, right. So they'll, and so Richmond will have to play them to get the premiership? They will. Right. Oh, they actually They are will. actually going to have to compete actually for four quarters them. and beat them right, to be they... given the premiership cup. Oh, and the Crows know that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Right. I think they're aware of that. They're not just coming over no. for the... Well, they're not coming over for the Brownlow tonight, but I think they are coming for the game. Yeah. <laughs> They'd want it. For the coronation. <laughs> It has been unbelievable. There was something like 30 pages in yeah. the Herald Sun of Richmond coverage, and I thought, is this enough? Oh, yeah, I, I don't think... Uh, I mean, but they know what people want, so I'm totally for it. it I'm not, it's like, it's, you know, last... In 2010, when Collingwood made the grand final, same sort of thing. Well, I mean, it's where, and, and Richmond, a bit like the Bulldogs, it's so novel. Yeah. But, but, so it really is, you know when they say this is souvenir edition, yeah. you go, this is rare it's enough that it is. When, is. The, when it's like Hawthorne or you know, some of the other clubs yeah. that you, Geelong have been Sydney about, and stuff, yeah. you're going, eh. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, there, there is that, that sort of novel thing to it with the Tigers being there. But, but it's, not, it's not quite the romance of the Bulldogs last year, whereas, whereas everyone in Victoria who didn't barrack for the Bulldogs yeah. were really kind of hoping they were going to beat Sydney. Whereas I reckon there's still plenty of people in, in Victoria who still hate Richmond and wouldn't mind the Crows winning. Yeah, I uh, reckon there's a bit oh, yeah, of... I'll put my hand in that cap. Yeah, there's a bit of a my... push that we're all Tiger supporters this week if you're from Victoria, but yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. No. Nah. That doesn't mean I necessarily like, jump on board the Crows either. No, but I am jumping on board the Crows. You're, like, you're, you're, you just uh, like to see... Well, you love Adelaide. Adelaide is one of the great cities of the modern era. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm... And the, pe- the fact that people let you out alive yeah. means you kind of owe Adelaide people. I, I know, I know. I, I did admit... I did did have to tie my run out of the Arca bar straight into the waiting cab. And so, oh, mate, don't, faster, even, faster. don't even turn that ignition off. Not since I've, a Rioli has someone moved so fast. <laughs> <laughs> you were just uh, out of there. Oh, I, was, I was like Eddie They Bates were good to you, the people of uh, Adelaide, so I can see why you've, you've backed the Crows. Oh, I am right on the Crows this week. I think I the Crows are going to win. Yeah, I think they are too. And, uh, I, and that's just because I think the Crows are the are better, better football side. side yeah, but, yeah. you know, but, Richmond have... But I said this the other day to someone, <clears throat> Richmond to me, I'm still trying to get my head around the idea that mm. Richmond are not hopeless mm. and are not just going to fall apart because mm. it's 30 years of baggage we, that we, we're all carrying in our heads. It's like, you we, know, all your life gravity worked a certain way. Yeah. And it's like gravity stopped working. It's just my, my little brain can't get across it. No. It's like, you know, know admitting you finally that Uncle Barry has given up drinking. Yeah. Like this time it's for real. Or, it's not just. Or, you know, Uncle Barry's warm personal friend, Jason, <laughs> yeah. might be a bit more than just his mate. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, that happens. But, and, and Rich Finally, we got to same. vote on whether that was okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we should thank our supporters, everyone we who's should. joined up to uh, make this podcast go along and support our writing. Uh, it's a huge, uh, huge thing. We do appreciate it. Um, we should mention, just as a breaking... News ex- breaking. ...exclusive, yeah. unless you've read it on... <laughs> Uh, every bit of social media or every bit of media or every heard on the radio or everything in the country, country yeah. but exclusive apart from everyone else. Mm. Uh, Trent Cochin has got off. He has. And Daniel Shield has been charged with bringing the Dylan game into... Shield. Dylan Shield, sorry, yeah. with um, bringing the game into disrepute. <laughs> yeah, he, could, he could face a hefty suspension, Dylan How dare Dylan he Shield. almost risk a, you know, oh. and even make Trent have to worry one night? Oh, look, the thing was, he was... I said this on Saturday, Trent Cochin could have pulled a knife out of his sock, yeah. cut Tex Walker's nose off and thrown it into the crowd, <laughs> and he still wouldn't get suspended this week. Mm. So the Barry Hall rule, they are not going to rub out the stars for the grand final, just for the controversy. But the Barry the Hall rule, they had to go to a lot of trouble to get Barry Hall off. This was they just did. the match review panel just went, nah, no nah, case to answer nah, for. And look, to be fair, I, I agree with them totally. It was the, the way I saw it. And, and I should add, you've got a gun to your head with a Richmond supporter next year as you say this. Yeah, well... <laughs> I totally agree with them. I totally agree with him. But, yeah, I actually thought it was just your classic accidental head clash. But I will have a crack at Channel 7 here now. I know you were, you were at the game. I was game, at the game. So you wouldn't have been watching the coverage. But as soon as Dylan Shield went down, 
Lingy on the boundary line, you know, oh, possibly the go. greatest boundary rider of, in the modern era. He uh, he immediately said, "Oh, Dylan Shield, he's done his shoulder. I think it's his shoulder." And then they kept talking about this for about the next ten minutes. What about his shoulder? His shoulder. And I'm thinking, and they were showing the replay from about eighteen different angles. And I kept saying, I actually turned to who I was watching it with and said. Am I the only bloke in Australia who can see you got hit in the head, not the shoulder? Well, I think probably everyone else apart from Channel 7. Apart from Channel 7 commentators. Now we're watching it, Basil's seen it, you know, watch out for the shoulder. <laughs> and then after quarter time, it's like, you know, even Lingy goes, oh, Dylan Shield, he's got the tracksuit on. I think that shoulder's going to keep him out. And I'm going, it's his head. He got hit in the fucking head, not the shoulder. And then halfway through the second quarter, we're going, Lingy goes, Oh, I believe he's got concussion. I, I, I wish somebody would concuss he's got, you. Yeah, concussion, concussion to the shoulder. Yeah, Lingy. Somebody. The Channel Seven commentary team, and I think we've got we had a few questions coming yeah, we'll about this later that. on, but they really outdid themselves on oh. uh, the weekend on Friday night yeah. when when uh, <laughs> BT yells out when Jake Lefer, uh, uh, you know, knocked the ball out. They go, he yells out. Is the best fister in the game. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and there just, you go. just sort of silence in the... I spat my whiskey out. Uh, well, I just say to my 12-year-old, mate, don't Google fister. <laughs> <laughs> well, then Bruce said, uh, uh, towards the end of that Geelong Adelaide game, he said, oh, the, there's the captain, speaking of Joel Selwood, there's the captain, he can hold his head up high. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you're just trolling us now. Yeah, yeah. You can't say that and not know that it's a joke. It's got to be funny. a joke. Like, yeah. I'd actually have more time if Bruce let it be known later on. Yeah, yeah. of course yeah, I was joking. Yeah, it was, it but was he didn't sound like he was. He yeah. sounded like yeah. they he just say this stuff. Head up high. They, they didn't, you know, cover themselves in any glory. This the, the one the one plus coming out of the Saturday's game for us TV viewers is that that was the last time we'll have to listen to Basil this year because I'm pretty sure he ain't doing the grand final. So it's going to be what, BT, It'll Hamish be BT and Bruce? And Bruce, Hamish. They'll do a bit of a Richard, combo. of course, will be there. Um, yeah, and, and of course they should have him there, and and probably Lingy, in what I suspect may be well one of his last appearances on Channel Seven yes, before I don't he's delisted. Lingy, yeah, I think yeah. Lingy's not going to. I think Rewalt and uh, Hodgy will yeah. be uh, we'll step into putting issues. the pressure on Lingy. Yes. really, you could just get anyone, oh, anyone off the street or, or any supporter. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on Lingy. <laughs> and and there's, we've got a viewers, uh, listener's question we'll get to on another part of Lingy's performance. Well, Adelaide too. v Geelong, uh, did you watch that? I did. And, and uh, Adelaide were, they were terrific. They, they, I mean, I don't think anyone suspected or expected that it was going to be that one-sided. Uh, no one expected Geelong to win by 10 goals. Do you think Geelong played their grand final the week before? Well, it's funny you say that because, <laughs> I mean, somebody uh, suggested that, and as we pointed out, playing your grand final in advance of the grand final is something that can only be seen in retrospect. <laughs> no one says, that, you know, I, I don't think um, Brad Scott came out to them um, before the game yeah. in the semi or in the preliminary and final. Said we played said, our grand final last hey, week. boys. Today we're playing our grand final. <laughs> and look, it answer your question. Um, Adelaide were just so over them and just were fantastic. Yeah, the Geelong and didn't look good. Geelong, Geelong, you know, they, they had a, a good crack at it here and there. but they, It's that uh, stare down that the Crows did. Is there anything more terrifying oh, in oh, sport, you, in life? Oh, it took, took it, them two quarters, the cats to recover from being stared at by the harker, men. But now it's, now it's the, the Crow... Hands on hip stance, whatever. That was. We need to come I, up I, I, with a, a name for it. It's just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It's the least intimidating the, thing I've ever seen. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and I get intimidated pretty yeah. easy. It's like watching junior footy when you know the kids line up and mum and dad have made a banner about as big, about six <laughs> feet wide, saying "Congratulations, Jared, on forty <laughs> Jared games." You know, spelt yeah, with three Y's, three Y's, <laughs> two R's, and and a G instead of a J. Uh, um, Jim Woodcock wrote in, given that Richmond looked pretty strong on Saturday, would you say that Adelaide will have to pull out their very best national anthem stance to beat them? Oh, well, gee, you're right on the money there. I think oh, <laughs> They're going to have to really... They're going to have to up the ante somehow. They're going to have to not blink the, maybe, whole, the whole national maybe, anthem. Maybe they turn around and don't face the other way. <laughs> just, t- just turn their back on Remember them to the show the New contempt Zealand, they have. New Zealand were once doing the Harker yeah. uh, against the Wallabies and David Campisi was playing and mm. he, so he, David Campisi, instead of facing it, went down to the 
other end of the ground and yeah. just kicked the ball around, ignoring yeah. it. And so they smashed, the New Zealand smashed him. <laughs> like, they got, it didn't it, really it can, backfire. It, it can backfire. backfire on you. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm all four of these uh, mind games and people. I mean, Adelaide beat Geelong because they're just bled, better than Geelong, really. Yeah, they've no, beaten by 11 goals, and so they should have. And uh, gee, Charlie Cameron was terrific. He, he was. He was. And yeah, he's, um, he's been good all year, but uh, it was like Channel 7 discovered him on set. He did that kick he five. And, and but he's been good all year. Yeah, and he's been a big factor. He when has. he's played well, his speed and his skill, he's a genuine superstar. And and BT at one point sort of had that sound of surprise in his voice too, that Josh Jenkins was playing that well. And I'm thinking, hey, God, Josh Jenkins was the best forward in the game for yeah, most yeah. of this year. And they've discovered Laird as well. Yeah, There's Laird. a few players. That oh, they, they even had a, had a super on the screen about, you know, should Laird have been tagged? You know, mm. so they did discover him. Did what did the Telstra tracker say? Oh, I'm not sure. I right? that's that, that's when I went outside to get another drink. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I'll, I'll throw something Put through. Put on you. about yeah. that. Uh, Anthony wrote in, are you surprised at how well Adelaide prepared for Geelong's secret weapon of danger playing forward, considering he's played forward every game this season? <laughs> this is, they were, thank they you were for on top of this, in. weren't they? This is my point about last week, how yeah. they were all making out that Chris Scott was a genius. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm the, he had a, I actually thought his midfield matchups were more interesting than, than moving Danger forward, but they've done that a fair bit. Like, moving Danger forward is not like, oh, you know... <laughs> Never happened before or an incredibly... Oh, it's like, maybe not so much this year, but last year, Richmond, they moved Dustin forward, uh, Dustin Martin forward, yeah. and he'd kick goals and win them the game. I mean, and, and you say, Dangerfield, that Geelong have done the same thing yeah. numerous times this season. Yeah. It wasn't a great shot. No, it's not. It's People act like it's amazing, but it wasn't that... But, uh... but in answer to Anthony... Yeah, the Crows, they were right onto that. Yeah. <laughs> they'd heard about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, they'd worked that one out. So, uh, good on the Crows. I... Um... I've said consistently for the last sort of for all the finals and a bit before that I think Crows are going to win. Mm. I think they're the best team. I think Richmond got a chance though, but you know, the tell Crows you what, are the best complete team. Yeah, and and given, I mean, let's be honest, in a serious sense, they've they've had a pretty tough, turbulent couple of years. With, it's a great story. With the Phil Walsh dying and and Dean, Dean Bailey, Bailey was, and even Sam Jacobs' brother a yeah, few yeah, weeks ago. Had a lot of There'll things. be a lot of tear shit if they win this Lost game. Lost Kurt Tippett. <laughs> oh, it hasn't all been bad. No, it hasn't. Uh, now, then, Richmond versus GWS. Now, this was the tension at the game. Was, let me you ask you. You could cut it with a knife. Could you? <laughs> and yet, Which the security had confiscated now, I was from me. So, given the late lack of security, you could have taken <laughs> several a, knives. A, a whole cutlery set in there Trust if you wanted to. I, I had a knife in case things went south. Well, you need a knife for your cheese platter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was a bit nervous at points where I'm like, so the Richmond fans, you could tell, they were like, they, they were a weird combination, it seemed to me, of, They've got confidence in this team now, mm. but they're not comfortable with that confidence no. because it goes against everything they've been taught over yeah. their entire life. But, they, like if, if but they want to be loyal and yeah. give their, you know. Like so, if Melbourne make a preliminary final. Yeah. We'll, we'll go in there saying, yeah, we've played well, we deserve to be there, but in the back of our minds, we half expect them we to don't lose. Deserve, we, yeah. don't yeah, we don't deserve happiness. Yeah, we don't deserve to be there. We don't deserve happiness. <laughs> no. And uh, so the, the, there was a lot of like that, the nervous energy was. Yeah. Palpable, and it was so one-sided. The crowd. Well, let me ask you. I mean, and, and we'll get onto this again in a minute. Channel Seven kept telling us how loud it was, but w- did was, they? <laughs> was the uh, no? W- I didn't see the coverage. I was. Was at the, the game. atmosphere as good? As, oh, as, the, no, the atmosphere it would have been was amazing. Uh, uh, like in AFL, you so rarely get a completely one-sided. Yeah. Uh, It'll be better than the this crowd, week. right? Yeah. So you know, in fact, I've been to a few games where it's been like going to A League games where it's like the Milne Victory playing Sydney or something, and mm. it's been a packed stadium, mm. and that's more in some ways louder because it's just one side, like yeah. everyone is a Victory yeah. supporter. So this was the first time for AFL I can really remember, because even the Swans have quite a few. So last year's Grand yeah. Final, that was the loudest I'd have experienced beforehand with yeah. the Bulldogs, but there was still a sizable Sydney contingent. Mm. But this was just. Amazing! It was mm. just completely, you know. I think for every thirty-two thousand Tigers supporters, there was one giant yeah. supporter there. So they had about what three? There were, but, yeah, there weren't many. There, there like, was there a were smattering few, of but, orange there, but you know, yeah, it was the, you know, and and so, but so when Richmond exploded out of the gates early, yeah. it was like this relief of, oh, 
they're not going to not show up at all. Yeah. Like, like, well, but they then, had two goals in the first 90 that's seconds. That's right. So that yeah. was like there was this relief, relief that spread across ground. But then when the Giants started to peg that back yeah. and look not phased by the crowd, yeah. You could see the tension just reassert itself. Well, at half time, when it was scores were virtually level, yeah, there must have been a nervousness amongst oh, the they, Tiger they, supporters there. You couldn't have cut that with a knife. No, <laughs> even though you tried. No, even that you could not have cut that <laughs> with a knife. But look, I've got to say, um, they were good that second half, Richmond, and that last quarter, they just oh, they were terrific. Actually put I mean, the, them being the a um, GWS being a player down hurt them a lot yeah. and I, but I do think Richmond would just, Richmond are just a better team they're, mm. they're a lot more disciplined you could tell watching it live I, I could sort of tell the Giants were just nowhere near as disciplined uh, mm. as disciplined on doing the the one percenters doing yeah. the defensive stuff like Richmond were Richmond know what they're good at and and has and have worked out they have to play a certain way to be mm. a chance and that's all and, you know and, and they, to they their all do credit, it. they're actually they do they, it. they're doing it you know? Yeah, so they've been really good. Uh, Mark wrote in, will Tiger supporters be able to stop celebrating in time to attend the grand final on Saturday? Well, some of them will, because <laughs> most of them won't be able to get a ticket. Well, the AFL have said that corporates will be looked after. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, those 17,000 tickets going to Richmond members, I mean, that should be more than enough, <laughs> surely. I've got four, and I'm going to just keep the other three empty so I can... Uh... <laughs> Really you, spread you can out. Stretch out like like when you're on a plane and there's nobody next to you. You just stretch yeah. I don't out. like being next. To, no, I don't really. Before I get death threats, yeah. <laughs> imagine that. Uh, I'm working all on the day too, so yeah. it should be good. Um, well, so am I. What are you doing? You, you, I've got. Th- I'm doing the North Melbourne Grand Final breakfast. Oh, that's big time. Yeah, I'm doing the St Kilda Grand Final breakfast, and that's big B list. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and I'm doing Sydney Swans lunch. So it's oh, like that's just not three speaking gigs. So, yeah, well, then, none, none of them come close to the old Halebury Grand Final. Yeah, you're doing the old Halebury yeah, Grand Final breakfast. Yeah, with and Denise Scott. I did the um, Victorian Amateur Football Association lunch on Friday, and that was good fun, actually. That was Sat um, next to Clarko all day. What's good, What was Clarko like in a social sense? I oh, know he's a brilliant speaker at these things. He's a good speaker. He, I introduced myself because we were seated, because we were both speaking. I was sitting next to him, and I said, oh, g'day, Tyso Ryan, and he went, Mm. Mm. Mention talk to me. No, just kidding. Yeah. No, he was actually nice. Like yeah. you, don't, you don't get to talk a lot these things because there's all these speeches. Yeah, so there's a lot talking of just, the whole time. You got to pay so he, attention. Yeah, we talked a little bit about what he was saying. He was doing exit interviews and what all that sort of stuff. What do you have? The chicken or the beef? I think it was a beef for everyone. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was <laughs> no, the, but it was a great event. Actually, it was yeah. good fun. Um, Huge, huge a turnout because the amateurs is a huge thing in Victoria. Yeah, it, I mean it's a huge competition. There's yeah. hundreds and hundreds of teams, and the women's football has just exploded. So mm. there was a lot of talking about that, but it was amazing to see like the amateurs, all these coaches and stuff were talking. You know, the, both the men and the women's team, they've all got so behind it, which was good. Oh, they um, have. I mean, so many of the amateur clubs now. It, the explosion in women's footy, it's been good for them because in a financial sense, because every amateur club is always needing more They're money. They've sort of doubled their size. Well, exactly. You've got you've, you've suddenly got 40 more players who all pay their subs and that sort of thing, so yeah. it's good for them. And even um, like at Old Haderbury, their women's first year women's team has been coached by Danny Frawley. And, you Did know, you see on the, the women's grand final... Uh, Darabin and um, playing with the Diamond Creek. I didn't realise the... it was on till later. Because one of the, their players, and I've just forgotten their name, I apologise, is um, got got crunched in a tackle, broke a collarbone, oh, but went see... back and kicked the goal anyway before going off. Yeah. I thought, I wouldn't have done that. No, no. I would have been on it's the floor crying. And so, yeah. like, you know, this is when like, people say, oh, the women aren't, you know, can they handle the toughness? You're like... Seriously. Yeah, I think nothing she could. Well, they all, more than I can. Uh, Seb Goldsmith wrote in, did you know that Daniel Rioli comes from a famous footballing family? Is that correct? I don't think Channel 7 mentioned that. <laughs> is What, is he related to one of the other Riolis? Is there other Riolis playing? They don't mention well, them much. No, I mean, he, I think his uncle or grand was the great <laughs> Daniel... Um, Maurice. Um, Maurice Morris Rioli, yeah. who was a Tiger superstar. And, of course, he's a cousin, I think, of Cyril. Yeah, but, yeah. but I, I can't be I sure. I always like saying Maurice instead of Morris because... Oh, no, it only makes you sound classy. No, there's a friend of mine who has that exact same name, and if you say Maurice, it just cracks it. <laughs> Which is why so you do it. So everyone yeah. does it. Yeah. Well, I see, I, I didn't know it that, that, that Daniel was related to Cyril. 
and Maurice because I don't think Channel 7 mentioned no, it once. No, well, and, and here's something else that Channel 7 did mention, and I don't know whether you're aware of this, that apparently Tom Scully is an elite runner. Oh, really? Covers a lot of ground, apparently. I had no <laughs> idea until I mean, he told us every, <laughs> every time he got the minutes. ball. Did, someone told me that they did the um, they had the noise decibel thing. At oh, the, did, yeah. they, did they mention that sparingly? Or oh what? no, no. I, 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 look, we've got a question. Archie Keeler wrote in. Can you tell me if it was loud at the MCG? Channel Seven did, didn't really mention it. <laughs> so how much did they mention it? Well, in their usual Lingy, Lingy had what he called was a noise meter. Yeah, which actually didn't look like a noise meter at all. It, it just looked like a a piece of black pipe that you bought by Bunnings with a couple of wires hanging out of it. Yeah. And he kept screaming at the, at, down the, the TV camera yeah. while he's holding the screen. He's going, it's at 124 decibels, which is louder, louder than a 747. I was like, well, take the thing away from your mouth. It's probably not that loud. <laughs> he always yells. It's oh, like he doesn't understand that the mic. That's what microphones are for. Yeah. It's like no one's taught him that, oh. what that does and he thinks he has to yell through the camera. Oh, look, I, I said on, on, on Saturday, I said, if just theoretically, what would the noise meter measurement have been yeah. if someone had used the actual noise meter to bash Lingy to death, which he <laughs> possibly deserved? Now, uh, one thing that came out of all this uh, which we talked about briefly, but it's been confirmed within minutes of the uh, game finishing mm. on uh, Saturday afternoon, evening, mm. early evening, uh, is Richmond are going to have to wear their clash jumper. Yes. And now the thing that surprised me about this is the AFL don't actually have a policy on this. They're, they're trying to pass on this idea. And I, there was several tweets that have over the years that have gone yeah. out and, and media statements. So sometimes they say, the AFL basically says, it's completely at our discretion. Yes. And then in other ones we'll they decide. say, because someone's finished higher, mm. they get to they wear their get own it. jumper. So, but how do you not have a policy at this stage? They have no coherent policy. And, and But how uh, do you not even have one? Well, you, you would think. You like, would think that they've got a policy on everything else. If you're going to have these stupid clash jumpers. Yeah. Why would you? Why wouldn't you have a policy then, like you, you, about it for the biggest game that happens? It's like it's not like the grand final like happens by chance. It happens every single year. Yeah, they, they pretty much know the date of when it's going to occur. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it, they're like, oh, it's a complete like. And am I the only one that thinks it doesn't clash? Richmond and yeah, and Adelaide. Of course, it doesn't. One team wears white shorts. I mean, nobody going to clash. I mean, but again, the AFL in all their wisdom the other day. Um, they had the umpires in yellow, yeah. you know, in Richmond. Playing. Now, I think they're, they're, they'll have them in grey this, this week. Put them but, in pink. Why don't you just put them in pink or something? Like they, they do are, for the, the women's the yellow... round. Uh, Make look, them the colour of the grass to really yes. <laughs> scare everyone. If you think it clashes, wear, if, if Adelaide win... Put one of the if they if they really think wear an, a crow's top into a bar full of Richmond supporters and see if you just magically blend in. <laughs> or this, the same thing in Adelaide, you know. I mean, what, what the I, human eye can detect the difference. Yeah, you, you can, especially on a high definition TV screen. <laughs> I would have thought it's the greatest travesty in human history. Oh, I easily. Mean, we all know that the class jumpers are only there for clubs to sell more merchandise, and yeah. that's that's something they pinched from. English Premier League soccer, where every and the Yanks have been doing it since the fifties as yeah, well in football but, and various things. And as we, I think we said last week, the bottom line is we used to watch Collingwood versus North on black and white TVs and still know who was the opposite team. Oh yeah, and 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 now everyone's got a seventy inch high definition TV. You, you can tell a difference. Yeah, I don't know why they're carrying on about it. It's no. absolute. Nonsense. But what do you reckon will happen? Tigers have already said, "Oh, look, we'll, we'll, we'll whatever we." I, I we're. think the Tigers rightly go. Why haven't, like, they, they thought they might have to fight the Cochin thing, but now mm. they've dodged that bullet. You don't want to devote energy all week trying to... To what jump are you going to You win? know what they should do? They should either just do what they're doing, which is say, we'll just be, we'll wear whatever because we just want to win the grand final. Mm. So, which is what sort of is their approach, which is good on them, you know, yeah. and I think that's smart. Or you go, what's the fine for... Someone's on Twitter, a few people said to me, oh, you'd forfeit, but that's just not the case. Nah, I think someone they, did. They, you, you get forfeit. fined like 20 grand or something. If yeah. you were the Richmond, you'd just wear your normal yeah. one and get and pay the 20 grand fine. Of course you would. I mean, that. I mean. Because then the AFL look horrible if they, I mean, they can make an example. But, but, but is, it is, is there a, a the merch, definitive 
policy from the ACL no, on, on, on what I, the fine would be. I asked and can't find one, so I could just not have on on the no no the I jumpers. can't find I can't find a but I might be wrong. But I've asked around a few people yeah. and I haven't so far had anyone be able to actually. A few people pointed to some earlier fines for incorrect yeah. jumpers and stuff and like that, which like is around that. The twenty it's, grand. It's stuff. usually twenty, but, yeah. But no one's been able to definitively yet. But no, I might yeah. have just not asked enough people. I, I have a feeling. Plus, no one's returning my calls. Yeah, either. let's have. <laughs> but I have a feeling that it could be 20,000 per player. But if player. it's 20,000. Oh, right. Okay. In that case, you've got to think about it. But, yeah. if, but if, if it was 20 grand, game, 30 grand, you'd, oh, the yeah. amount of merch you're going to sell on that day oh, alone. Exactly. That's worth they, it. They would have made it just last week from the people who turn up to training, let alone the people who turn up to training this week. Uh, Trent wrote in, do you have a Titus and Sergio Variety Hour Clash T-shirt? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Yeah, it's just plain white with, with whiskey stains down the front. It's terrific. It worked well. It's a great idea. Uh, Dinosaur Punter wrote, should the Clash replace the Killers as pre-grained entertainment? Wait, that's, it's, he's been clever there. It's a bit hard, though, since the lead singer of the Clash is dead. Right. But, yeah, well, yeah, there's a bit of a downer. But, yeah. Well, I didn't stop them wheeling meatloaf out, did it? <laughs> it's always good to get the meatloaf back happening on the... Um, did you see uh, the Killers are doing a free concert after on the MCG after the game? Yeah, That's like, pretty big. Yeah, oh, the Killers would be, it'd be great. I, I actually quite like the Killers. Yeah, that'd be a good concert, to, and especially for free. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they, I think they're back in town in May next they're year. They're coming out again, so... Um, yeah, I, I actually, yeah. I reckon the Killers will do all right this week. I, yeah. I don't know. At night, a night grand final is when you could make the most of having a big rock and roll band there. They haven't, um, we must not be, it must be Tuesday, Wednesday that the media are planning to get into the should be have a night grand final debate. Yeah. We haven't had that yet. We've, we've got the, we've got to have the injury race to be fit. Mm. That, that's going to happen. Mm. We've missed out on the tribunal drama. There'll be the unlucky one player who may get dropped. Yeah. Uh, the sc- scalpers are finally going to be cracked yeah. down on this year. And and with any luck, the lead singer of the Killers in a Richmond jumper for the Herald Sun or something like that. <laughs> you you know, know. That's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> He's from Vegas. He'd know all about this. Oh, I'd be, they're all into it over there. And yeah. this, this is the game that stops America. <laughs> um, Chris Coleman wrote in, why are fans who sing yellow and black complaining about their team well, wearing yellow and black instead of black and yellow? It's a fair point. Fair point. It's a very fair point. You know. But you can't. You can't replace that bit of the song with black and yellow. It just doesn't work. <laughs> it just would not work. Do you think the Tigers is the best song? Yeah, I do, actually. It's a controversial position if yeah, you don't think that. Yeah, I, look, I do. And, and when you hear it sung, as you would have done on Saturday, by 90-odd thousand supporters, yeah. it'd be pretty... I was fleeing, but yeah. Yeah. And it'd still be fairly impressive performance. Oh, even in the box we could hear it. Could you? <laughs> no, I wasn't, on the, I wasn't in the box. <laughs> no one would let me in. Security wouldn't let me in. Um, with, your, with your knives and your my cutlery. Kni- my knife, my tension-cutting knives. Um, it was kind of a, it was an amazing experience. I was particularly glad that the GWS song uh, wasn't going to be played in its entirety because that is but, oh, it's, a terrible it's a song. But correct me if I'm wrong here. It seemed to be on the TV coverage. They, they played a brief they moment a, of a it. Yeah, bits yeah. of it every time GWS kicked a goal. I thought that was, every nobody they, ever I was, does that. I was surprised they weren't just pumping in Giants fans cheering, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. to even it yeah. out. Over yeah, them. a bit of sound effect. Work, yeah, I was past, half expecting that. So yeah. I, I reckon AFL would personally they would be wrapped. The, the, the Tigers ch- got through. Oh yeah. yeah. Both financially and for interest, but mm-hmm. also like genuinely, like they want GWS to be competitive to a point. Yeah. But imagine if the Tigers had been blocked by GWS. Like, oh, so we're, we're laughing about the overkill of the media coverage this week. Yeah. But you can imagine how dull this week would be if it was GWS versus Adelaide. The, the, but that, the that, whole town wouldn't have the buzz about it. Yeah, but see, if it was. <laughs> So it is a bigger buzz because it's, but it's not just a Victorian interstate thing. Because to me, I never just break for the Victorian mm, side no. as a matter of course. Because any policy that ends in you potentially barracking for Collingwood or Essendon yeah. is a bad policy, right? Sure, so I don't sure. have that. You know, I sort of think, and a lot of footy fans I know are like this. You kind of have your team, and you hate every other team. Mm. Like you don't have favourites, or there's some yeah. you might hate slightly less. Yeah, I, I hate this whole 
they're my second team yeah, yeah, kind I, of thing. Oh, I, yeah. I actually don't mind that. And say, no, they're all awful. Yeah. Uh, only your team is true and, 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 and that's the, the one ridiculous yeah. one-eyed nature you have to have. Yeah. So I don't really care if Adelaide win or Richmond win in a way. Like this idea that we have to get behind Richmond. Well, Richmond caused me as much heartache as the Crows yeah, have over yeah, the Yeah, I years. can't stand Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I'll be happy in some ways. Like, and I love Adelaide. You, yeah. and you love Adelaide. Yeah. It's your home away from home. No, yeah. I mean... You're happy because you've got friends who back for these teams, and yeah. so you kind of appreciate when uh, you know that that yeah. you do. Have some good yeah, I've got a lot of mates who are, who are fanatical Tiger. And I, but I wouldn't have cared if it was like you know Sydney Crows or West Coast Crows. That's because you know you still get all mm. the fans come over for that. And the, G- GWS would have been tough just because they've been a lot mm. long. They just don't have the numbers, you no. know. Like when when I've been to in the, when you're in the city and there's an interstate team here. Yeah. It's actually really exciting because there's more people in the city 24-7. Like yeah. if you're in the city around the clock. Um, I remember when the, you know, the Dockers were over a few years ago. I was just ago. about to say the and Dockers. The city was we- packed and they were all in good form. Every bar was packed. And purple and, they were in, and white jumpers yeah, they were in good. They were in good. They were good value. I'm and glad was, you said it because I was about to say the same thing. I ma- couldn't believe how many Fremantle supporters were in Melbourne yeah. that week. So it'll be good. You'll get all the Crow what, supporters what over. What about in, in coming years when... GWS play the Gold Coast in the grand final. I don't think we've got any brush yeah, in the no, Gold Coast. I don't think we have to worry about that anytime soon. <laughs> anyway, the GWS has got to wait one more year, yeah. basically. <laughs> uh, the Brownlow's on tonight. Are you going? God, no. Aren't you? Oh, no. I'm going. Are you really going? Not really. I was just gonna say, <laughs> I'm wearing a dinner suit made of flattened Are you wor- Are cans. you working yeah. as the waiter? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I would I have been, though, before. I've never been. I've been invited a couple of yeah. times, and it's just... The idea of it is so boring to me. It is a one pretty the, dull night. I know we're meant, I'm meant to say being a footy fan, it's a great night. It is one of the – I watch it to bag, but mm. it is one of those boring things. Oh, when you sit in the room for that whole thing. Cause it, yeah. Because the ad breaks, nothing's happening and it just seems to go But they feed you forever. at 5.30, don't yeah. they? Because they want the dinner out of the way before the TV yeah. coverage starts. So everyone in that room eats at 5.30 yeah. and then has to sit there till at least 10.30, more like 11, the, 11, 15. The best thing about the night is watching all the pissed players hitting the dance floor afterwards. Yeah, but that's what everyone says. They said the after parties are the, bit, yeah. the best bit. It's like the Logies. The, the after parties are cracker. But the, so can't you just go to the after party? That's the what, yeah. You might, I don't know. You might as long as you can get in. Something, yeah. It is. Um. Who do you think? Who's your pick? Oh, look. I, like, like it's hard. This well, year. everyone. You know, it's Dusty. Is oh, not Clayton Oliver. No, I don't think Clayton. I think Clayton's next year. I don't think the umpires <laughs> have worked him out yet. I actually suspect that Dangerfield might go very close. I want Dangerfield to, to win. Yeah. Just for the faux outrage. Yeah, yeah I reckon the, it'll go very, very close. The pretty funny. Oh, I hope he wins by a vote, Dangerfield. And then... Because you just love to see the world burn. Yeah, I just want to see... You just like unhappy people. Yeah, I just want to see the, the whole thing just go up in flames. I do yeah. worry if Dusty wins because Richmond fans aren't designed for this much happiness mm-hmm. all at once. Like, it's just, can they handle it? Oh, it'll be like back in 2000 when Shane Wo Woden won it for Melbourne and then we had to play Essendon in the grand final. <laughs> And, we, and, we got close. Oh, I, I had mates going, oh, <laughs> For the it's first an five omen. Minutes. Why Woden? When, oh, it's, you're gonna, oh, I said, no, no, not against Essendon. No. Well, the fact that he could pull that out meant, well, upsets do happen, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, uh, look, it's going to be an interesting night, but I can't say I'm that excited nah. about it. Who comes third, assuming those two finish? Sloan? Him, uh... He always polls well, Rory Sloan. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Kelly might get a sneaky. Yeah. Like, he's had some pretty good games. Yeah. Um, who else? Clayton Old would be a bolter. I think Clayton will poll well, but yeah. he won't poll. No, he, he you know. won't have enough to but get he, up the top. But, you know, he's always in the middle of it all, so yeah. that helps. I just don't think the umpires, most of them are smart enough to realise how much work he does inside Oh, the packs, don't, Clayton Oliver. Don't think the umpires are the best judge of. No, I don't. Funnily enough, but uh, <laughs> they they see the obvious things, the the subtle things. I reckon they miss, and they're the things that Brown- Clayton Oliver's good at. I think the Brownlow is just ridiculous because it's just if you're a ruckman or a forward, you just mm. got no chance of winning it. Or okay. a defender, you got no chance. And you, you say boo to raise a ray, you know you're not getting a vote that day. Yeah, you know. 
It's it's weird. Um, so anyway, I, I will watch it. I don't know why. Uh, listeners' questions. Anna Com- Combin wrote in, who will be drunk first? Uh, has, this is if you're while you're watching oh, you the grand you, final. You right. No, yeah. no, she's asking, who will be drunk first while watching the grand final? Her husband, who will drink whenever Rance and Genius or Best Defender ever are mentioned in the same sentence. Fair enough. Or her, when she drinks whenever Jenkins' basketball background gets mentioned. I think they're both going to die. I was about to say, either way, you're both going to be in a pretty messy... I like this couple. (laughs) (laughs) They're my kind of people to watch the game with. The the couple that gets alcohol poisoning together, (laughs) yeah, that stays together. Stays together and, you know... yeah. Right through treatment. <laughs> it's um, it is going to be amazing. As long as one of them is sober enough to on to Thursday, dial an ambulance. Yeah, on Thursday we should do a bit of prediction of what, like a bit of the bingo of the yeah. terms that are get what the, what the coverage is going to do. Sure. How are they going to weave Dangerfield in all through the coverage? They'll probably have him on as a special comment. Oh yeah. They, well, what are the odds of that? I reckon the odds of them asking him are pretty pretty low, but. The odds of him saying yes are very <laughs> long. <laughs> Do you think he'll ring them? <laughs> oh, don't you really go, no way, I'm going surfing or something. Or... <laughs> surfing in a suit. <laughs> uh, Dread Pirate Roberts. I haven't heard from Dread for a while. No. Will the uh, match review uh, panel take into account the injury suffered by Tony Abbott bef- san- before sanctioning DJ Funk Nuki- Nukel? Funk Knuckle. Funk Knuckle, is it? Yeah, I think that's DJ Funk Knuckle. Is so he's he's well the, known? He's the one that headbutted. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, Abbott. I think they will have to look at the. Uh, was it intentional? Seems intentional. Yeah, I'd say it was intentional. Careless, perhaps. <laughs> I think it's just in. I think it, no, it's not careless. It's just, intentional. It was intentional. High to, contact. Yeah, I don't think contact was severe. No, it didn't but, do like. It wasn't. Old DJ Funk Knuckle. What a peanut that was! <laughs> an absolute. Oh, I I couldn't believe like his just brutal honesty of why he did it. Yeah, like it was. Just, I'll never get the chance least, to yeah, headbutt that to nut the. Yeah, at least ever. at least he didn't like kind of try and pretend it was something that wasn't. Yeah, like, you know he was pretty straight. At least, yeah, at least he didn't deny it. Well, I, I would have liked it. Would have been funnier if Tony Abbott. Who I don't know if you know has a boxing background. <laughs> <laughs> had given him a couple of short, sharp jabs hey. in return, and then, then of course, Abbott would have been the, the bad guy then, and DJ Funk Knuckle would have been the victim. Yeah, no, the match review panel are going to have a good look at it. Yeah, oh, they should. But there wasn't a lot of vision, I hear. No. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to know. I don't know if all the witnesses there who they're going to side with. Well, exactly. I mean, Tony's you know, not the most popular player well, nobody, that's played nobody, the game. Nobody likes Tony Abbott. Including most of his family, I think. But <laughs> but you don't go around headbutting people in public. No, you tend to lose like you tend to lose a bit of support if you headbutt someone. Mm. Mm. People don't. And, they're, they're not pro that. And, and if you're gonna do it, do it properly. Yeah. You split his nose across his face. Don't just you know. <laughs> That's your complaint. <laughs> he did, didn't do it properly. Don't if you're gonna to- do something. Don't do send a DJ to do, do a man's properly. job. Yeah, exactly. Who would have thought DJ, that DJ was Funk Knuckle? <laughs> you know, really well known. I would like to see you and DJ Funk Knuckle do a podcast together. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he could, we could spin a few discs in, in between. <laughs> he, I like how he just, he just saw the opportunity and decided to take it. Like, yeah, what well, an he, idiot. Well, he, he, complete idiot. But again, you sort of. Relatedly, say, well, at least he saw the opportunity to, even though it was a stupid decision, you know. Surely he could have just said something harsh, oh. fugitive harsh words. Yeah. You know, don't make it physical. Uh, that was good. Um, Greg Lacey wrote in, Titus, are you prepared to give up your personal bunker you had ready for Fawthorn last year and activated it during the Trump victory in readiness for Tiger time on Saturday? Well, oh, you, you, you shouldn't give it up. Well, I'm thinking of, you know, in the next day or so, just fleeing the city. Mm. Because remember in medieval times, remember. Yeah. Oh, remember <laughs> you it well. Would remember. Yeah, but, I remember. Uh, I was at primary school. In medieval times, people would flee the city. We used city. to kill a dragon for lunch. <laughs> you should ride a dragon to work. <laughs> uh, in medieval times, whenever the plague hit a city, mm. 
every everyone who could, especially the the rich, would flee mm. and move out to the country to just mm. not be around people. And that was a very good way of avoiding getting it. And uh, I kind of think this is like that. That this is like a plague mm. is about to hit. Whether we whether they win or lose, it's the same result to me. Yeah. It's going to be better to not be around it. I and, think you're uh, right. And the last time the and the last time the Tigers won a premiership was the Middle Ages, anyway. Yeah, it was. So there's a nice symmetry to the there idea. Is. And 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 you, you can almost see that yeah, fleeing the city. It's it's like one of those disaster movies where the the you know the asteroid is going to hit Earth yeah. in three weeks' time. Yeah, we need to be advised to get out of town by Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I think to be, to be taken seriously. Well, Richmond supporters are like zombies. Yes. On their own, perfectly able to deal with them. But mm. in large numbers, mm. they become dangerous. Yeah and, yeah, and you can't shoot them. You have to... You can't shoot them. I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> you have to... You know, you have to <laughs> there's a little Woody Harrison. You have to take them, their heads off with a, <laughs> an, an axe handle. You know? No wonder you've become so attached to Adelaide. <laughs> You've changed since visiting there in the first time, for a first time in a long time. Uh, Mark uh, Bruti wrote in, just how mad is Adam Trelaw right now? Oh. Remember he said he looked at the Collingwood list and yeah. the uh, Richmond, Richmond list, list and just judged the Collingwood one was better. Another thing that he's done in that is uh, discounted any chance of him being a list manager anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he's actually the per- maybe he's managing Collingwood's yeah, list. Yeah, I think he might take over the football manager. That is role. embarrassing. That is. When when you, you do look at it in that you know, in that form, or is he weighed them both up and, and decided that Collingwood's and list got was it so wrong. much better than It's Richmond. not like Collingwood finished fourth or something. No. He's got it really yeah. you know. I like how I bet Mark is a Richmond supporter. Yeah. Because if he's not, but I know because I got that question in various forms from a lot of Richmond supporters. Yeah. They've not forgotten. You can just tell. And who can blame them, you know? Uh, Armitage Shanks wrote in. Who? Armitage Shanks. Right. Should almond milk be allowed to be served on grand final day? I'm not sure where Armitage <laughs> is coming from here, but I, look, I don't think almond milk should be allowed to be served on any day. Well, first, it's not a milk. Well, can't be. You can't. It's, it's almond, not a dairy product. It's it, a nut. No, it's almond juice. <laughs> yeah, that's what it should be called, almond juice. So why do they, why do they call it milk? Is that one of those? I think that's what stupid... they call marketing. Yeah, because almond juice sounds awful. It does. Yeah, who wants almond juice? So milk, almond milk. They yeah. kind of it's the thing they pretend you should have if you can't have dairy. So like but, it's some legitimate why sac- would like you, substitute. Anyone serve it on Grand Final Day? I, well. People do Unless all kinds of crazy things. Armitage Shanks. <laughs> People do all kinds of crazy things. Yeah. There you go. You, you, you're having your, you know, your Barbie outside the MCG. Yeah. You're snagging bread, a bit of sauce. You want, you want onions with it? Yeah. And by the way, and a cup of almond milk, thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's un-Australian. <laughs> it is un-Australian. Can you imagine? Oh, I should bring in some almond. Have you ever had almond no, milk? No, I have no idea what it no. tastes like. You're never going to either, no, are possibly you? Possibly not, no. No. Fair yeah. enough. No, <laughs> unless you can mix it with Jim Beam. <laughs> well, I don't think a Jim Beam ruin? and almond milk would make it curdle. It's a taste sensation. <laughs> Can't see it kicking off. I think we've just done our chances of having an almond milk yeah, sponsor. I don't, I don't think they're about to deliver a, <laughs> a crate of it. <laughs> well, maybe they might to try and change our minds. Yeah, perhaps. You know, and, we, and then next week, if they pay us enough, we'll come up and go, you know what? I tried it. It was delicious. Now that almond milk, I feel a million bucks since I've been on the <laughs> almond milk. <laughs> you could become like what Sam Kekovich was to lamb <laughs> for <laughs> almond milk. Almond milk. You know it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, we did this thing on the radio years ago. We were l- lamenting the fact that you couldn't buy Bertie Beetles anywhere in Melbourne yeah. anymore. From our childhood. Can you buy them anywhere in Australia? Well, I, th- I think they've, they've made a comeback, but they're, they're crap compared to the old ones. Yeah, everything's but, crap but, compared to the old things. We, we made this ridiculous statement, and within 30 minutes, um, Cadbury's or Nestle, whoever did it, had, had dropped two big boxes of Bertie Beetles on the front doorstep. All right. Oh, we've given them away for weeks. <laughs> so don't discount the almond milk thing. All right. It could happen. I'll, I'll get my fingers crossed, because uh, I'd also look like a... Uh, Aston Martin DB11, if yeah. people are listening. If that's going to work, let's really... Yeah. I'd much prefer that to a crate of almond milk. First class tickets to I would London. Also, yeah. I would also like a Melbourne Premiership yeah. if anyone's listening. <laughs> if you can deliver that. That'd be terrific. It'd be amazing. If you're, if you're listening, Mark Neal. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Mark. Uh, Jim Bob. Jim Bob. <laughs> or, can I stress, Jim Bob, all one word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hello to our listeners in the Deep South. Yeah. Uh, will there be a commemorative dusty neck tattoo in the paper if Richmond win? Look, I'm just going out on a limb here, but I reckon Jim Bob might be fairly familiar with the neck tattoo <laughs> idea. I, it would be a good thing for the Herald Sun to do. Although, did you read, just I think today, Jake King, you know, you know, in between court appearances, yeah. he's, uh, he's expecting enormous business at his tattoo parlour if the Tigers win. Right. And yeah, he, that's he where said, I'd go. He said, I'm already stocking up on yellow ink. <laughs> uh, just well, just, a, just a community you? health warning. If you are going to Jake King's uh, tattoo, tattoo parlour, parlour. Yeah. just be just double check the spelling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you know Tigers want, has got an E in it, Jake. Yeah, and you don't want to have <laughs> Richmond. You got It's M before the N, you know, at the end of the word. <laughs> That could be very interesting. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be some shocking tattoos done. One of the sad things that is, 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 don't you think the Victorian government should come out this week and lower the age of which people can get neck tattoos just for this week? I didn't know there was an age limit. <laughs> you didn't know? You like, <laughs> like, how old do you reckon Richmond fans should be able to get Dustin Martin neck tattoos? What age down to? Oh, look, I'd just make it double figures, 10. I was going to say four, but four. You're, you've always been the more conservative of you and I. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think ten? Yeah, ten. See, once you're four, you, you can make you can make you can make your own decisions to have <laughs> About eat them alive across your throat. <laughs> That'd be the, that's what you they should have. The, you know the 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 dots. Across your throat with eat them alive underneath. Yeah, no one's ever or cut regr- here. No one's ever regretted. A neck tattoo. Never, never. In That's their life. one of the things that people, you know, the media don't cover enough. And this is why we should encourage children to do so. Well, uh, it'll be the there Victorian for the rest government, of your life, kids. Yep, yeah, they're quick to come out for uh, nonsense things like health things and school and stuff. But where and they are public on this, holidays, I love how everyone gets annoyed about, or not everyone, the business globby get annoyed about the Friday, <laughs> yeah, and public holiday. And then they get annoyed about, and they say, we should move it to Monday. I'm like, have both. Yeah, well, why not? <laughs> no one does any work on the Friday anyway. No. Well, we, we certainly won't be doing a podcast because we don't work on public holidays. No, never. No, we'll be at the parade. Are you going to go to the parade? Oh, I may get dragged along. Are you riding in one of the cars? <laughs> <laughs> it's the king of almond milk. <laughs> You're on the almond milk float. Yeah. <laughs> no, You'll I'm, be tossing I'm cartons parade, of almond I'll be on one of those stupid yellow bikes that are littering the city now. <laughs> See, I reckon that's what they should use at the MCG on Saturday for the retiring players. Oh, yeah, right around on those O-bikes. Yeah, on the O-bikes. Get them going around there, just, you know. See if Zach Dawson can ride one of them. My social media off. feed is just people taking pictures of where those O-bikes have been dumped. Oh, they're everywhere. That's basically it. I, I have, for all the ones I've seen littered all around town, I have yet to see one being ridden by a person. But the one thing I feel bad, I don't know if in other states they've got these. I think in some, I think they're being rolled out. But this company, you know, they just leave the bikes around. But I think they've got an app or something that unlocks them. I don't yeah. really know. I haven't looked at it properly. But what people are doing is they're just taking them and throwing them places. Yeah. And everyone's annoyed at the O bike company. Mm. Like your your product is littering our streets. Not the people that are being idiots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like uh, the iBike people are trying to do a nice thing and like provide a ability for people to yeah. use bikes whenever they want. And, and, yeah, yeah. And the big mistake the, is that they... I, I reckon, they thought people were decent. Yeah, they thought people would de- were decent <clears throat> and that they would use them pr- properly. But but it, it, really, their the big mistake was not letting people know about it. They just They, they just seem to be... Not there one day and there the next. They've got a sign on them explaining very clearly what they are for and how you can use them. It's not like it's a a mystery. Plus, just because something shows up one day doesn't mean you throw it on the roof of the bus stop. (laughs) I didn't see this child here (laughs) yesterday. (laughs) How it goes. Let's let's get three or four kids and toss them in the Yarra and just leave them there. (laughs) That's sort of the, you know, that's the logic. A mate of mine posted a photo on on Instagram on the weekend and he'd he'd been walking along the, the Yarra River in Richmond somewhere and you could just see the Yarra. Yellow handlebars of one poking out of the water. I thought, oh, that's that's just got 
That's, that's why Melbourne's the world's most livable city. Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, Sean Brennan wrote in, at what point will the live ladder make an appearance on Saturday? <laughs> oh, I hope it does. I hope that the live ladder... If, if Channel 7, some producer there will be thinking, how can we bring this in somehow? Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or a variation of it. <laughs> Just, there'll be... Won't, okay, so it won't be a live ladder, but I, I reckon we can just about guarantee on Saturday there will be two or three completely pointless graphics. Well, you know the pointless graphics that instead of a live ladder, mm. what they could have up is every now and then flash up on the screen. Uh, if the grand final ended now, this team would be the premiers. <laughs> <laughs> just two of us in the league. Yeah. And they just flash it up regularly. And Actually, I should have given that idea, should yeah, I? Yeah, you shouldn't have. But, but, cause cause that, feel free to take it, Channel, take channel 7. Take it yeah. I so. just, you know, you just learn so much alone from the Telstra tracker. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I still don't know what that is, the It's Telstra just tracker. how much Ks each player's run. Oh, and, and, and you know what? It's probably going to be Tom Scully. Is he an elite He's runner? He's an elite runner. Covers a lot of ground, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Rewald also used to do he that. He used to do that. Not as much as Tom Scully. No, but he was a big Ford. Did you know he played yeah. up Ford? Yeah, yeah. For and, a and key Ford. He used to, cut, used to you know, run a lot up the ground and run back. <laughs> His defensive running skills were second to none, other than Tom Scully. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, it's a terrific. Uh, it is going to be a. I genuinely do think, and uh, it's going to be a great grand final because I think. Mm. Both teams. I think Adelaide especially play incredibly exciting brand of footy. So mm. I'm actually, and I love Grand Final Week. Yeah, I love it. So do I. It, it is, it is a great week in in Melbourne. Yeah. And and it will be the the first quarter, the first twenty minutes are going to be hell for leather. Oh, it's, yeah. Because that's the way Adelaide play, and that's the way Richmond will want to start. Yeah. I also reckon there's going to be a couple of good blues. Really? Yeah. I, re- I reckon there'll be some jumper punches and there'll be a bit of. Bit of Tex Walker action, you know. He won't care if he gets suspended for six weeks. Nah, if they win the flag, you shouldn't be. A, you, it should be a free for all in the grand final anyway. Well, oh, that's what I think. <laughs> it used to be like that in the NRL. <laughs> Blokes would come out and just before the ball was bounced, <laughs> can hit they, somebody they behind play. I think they still do that. All right. Well, we're going to be back Thursday, aren't we? Definitely. definitely we've Thursday definitely to got to do our a, big, our big preview huge show. preview, huge preview, yeah. and uh, we're going to have it at the um, tennis centre, but. But we're still, there's still tickets available <laughs> for our grand final show. Uh, so we'll be there. Thanks to you to every supporter. And on top of that, we're also sponsored by Almond Milk. Uh, yes, from Nestle. The only milk that's made from nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? I'm going to get someone writing and go, no. There's, no, it's not. There's it's, hazelnut it's, yeah. milk or yeah. something. Thanks. Macadamia milk. <laughs> You can get coconut, beer nuts coconut milk. milk. We can get like beer nuts milk. That's <laughs> I, I drink beer nuts milk. Mixed nuts milk. <laughs> oh, gee, we're getting into dangerous territory. Yeah. Uh, we will see you on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>